The Institute for Justice, these are guys who brought you the eminent domain cases over the past decade. Well, now they're setting their sights on civil forfeiture, what they call policing for profit. Government doesn't have to prove that you've committed a crime, even arrest you, to take your property away. The Institute for Justice has produced a video explaining why this becomes a problem. Here's a bit. Because most state and federal laws allow police and prosecutors to pocket the proceeds, they have a big incentive to pursue profits, not justice. No surprise, abuse is rampant. One New York police department spent forfeiture funds on food, gifts, and entertainment. In Georgia, forfeiture funds paid for football tickets for a DA's office. And a DA in Texas used forfeiture dollars to buy TV ads for his re-election campaign. And this is your property. I mean, this, is, this is stuff they have sold, your property they've sold and put in their own pocket. To give an idea how much money we're talking about, in 1986, the Justice Department forfeiture fund took in $94 million. Now it has more than a billion. Joining me now is attorney Scott Bullock. He is from the Institute for Justice. I didn't know anything about this, Scott. Uh, I, I imagine most folks out there are the same. How did you find out about it? Well, you're absolutely right. A lot of Americans aren't aware of this, uh, but when they find out about it and people were contacting us who had lost their property, were outraged about it, and that's how we got involved in it. But when people learn about this, that the government can take your property regardless of whether or not you've been convicted of a crime or even arrested for a crime, people are outraged about it. And civil forfeiture is really one of the most serious assaults on private property rights in the nation today. Isn't, isn't there something unconstitutional? I mean, we have property rights guaranteed by, in the Constitution. It's almost an extension of our persons. And to, to take that away before you've established whether it was, it was used in, in the committing of a crime seems to be, to, uh, you know, you're guilty until proven innocent. That's exactly right. Uh, civil forfeiture turns a fundamental American principle that you are innocent until proven guilty on its head. In civil forfeiture, your property is guilty until you prove it innocent. And because this is not a criminal proceeding, it's a civil proceeding, the burden is on you to try to get your property back, and the standards are much lower. And also because it's a civil proceeding, most constitutional protections that are afforded to criminal defendants do not apply to civil forfeiture. So it is really an abused system. It's, it, and it is similar to eminent domain, isn't it? It's, it's the same kind of thing where the state has the authority to come in, grab what it wants uh, without having to prove its case. Absolutely. I mean, it, it's, it's part and parcel of this attitude that property rights are somehow second-class relations in, yeah. in relationship to other constitutional uh, rights, and it's one of the reasons why police and prosecutors are able to abuse this power. It has to stop. We are starting a campaign to raise public awareness of this, file cases to try to challenge uh, these unconstitutional seizures of property. By the way, just one case in particular, there's this guy named El Ali, who uh, I guess Yes, he's uh, where in Detroit or someplace. He he buys old properties, fixes them up, whether whether it's houses or cars. And a couple of his cars, or at least one of them, was confiscated this way, right? So he, it could drive him out of business. That's exactly right. He's in Houston, Texas. Houston. Uh, he's our client. Uh, yeah, and, and he is immigrant success story. He came to this country from his native Jordan, worked his way up. And he sold a car to somebody. The person was paying him on credit. Uh, the person hadn't paid off the property yet. Uh, he gets a DUI. The state of Texas seizes the car for forfeiture. And now Mr. Ali has to try to get his property back. He obviously didn't do anything wrong. It's still his car. And to show you the absurdity of these laws, the name of the case in Texas is State of Texas versus 1-2000. And for Chevrolet Silverado. <laughs> oh my the goodness. action is against the property. The property has somehow committed a crime, and then the yes. owner of the property has the burden to try to get it uh, right. back. These laws are very much abused, and they have to stop. And in particular, yeah. in Texas and in many other states, police and prosecutors get to keep the property that they seize oh, for nice. forfeiture. Uh, yeah, which puts it in a direct, uh, gives them a direct <laughs> conflict of interest and allows them to uh, pursue uh, property and profit, not yeah. justice. Boy, oh boy, you add that to their pension funds, and it might not be a bad job to get. Scott Bullock, good to see you, Scott. Thank you very much for coming Thank in and you. sharing this with us.